In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Facebook pixel, just generally speaking with code, and then as well as how to set it up on a software called Go High Level. So I'll walk you through both of those steps, show you how to get there and all that good stuff. So first things first, make sure that you are on a desktop or laptop. Um, and first things first is log into Facebook. And you pretty much just want to make your way to the business settings. Um, easiest way to get there is if you just type in business.facebook.com slash settings in the URL bar like this. If you're inside of Facebook, because I know it's hard to get there and they change this all the time, you can try finding the ads manager first, clicking on that. Once you get to an ads manager, then what you can do is hit these three lines here in the bottom left and then go to business settings here. And then you'll be able to choose your business and then you'll get to this page here that I was at here as well. Now, the first step is to actually create your pixel. So what you'll do is on the left-hand side here, scroll down to data sources. And like I said, Facebook changes things all the time. So it's not even in pixels anymore. It's in data sets, which is very confusing. Um, but anyway, you go to the data sets section and then what you'll do is you'll add a pixel and you'll go ahead and name it. Um, and I'll just go ahead and name this one this just for testing. So this is, you'll name your pixel, you'll hit create, you'll wait just a second and then it'll actually create your pixel. And that's the first step. Now from here, make sure that you assign yourself to the pixel that you just made so you can actually work on it. Then from there, you also want to connect it to whatever ad account you're going to be using it on. So if you have an ad account and you're running ads, make sure that you actually click assign assets here and connect it to the account where you are going to want to run ads with this pixel. Once you've done that, in the top right here, you'll just click open an events manager. And that'll take you to this page right here. From there, you'll get to this screen right here. Now, what I would recommend doing is I'll first just walk you through how you would set it up if you just have a landing page and you're not using the conversion API. Ideally, you wanna use the conversion API because it's just a lot more accurate, but if you don't know how to do that or you're not using Go High Level, it's a lot more complicated to set up. So in this video, I'm just gonna show you how to set up the pixel through browser, and then I will show you how to set up the API with ConvertCloud um, or Go High Level. Um, so what you'll go ahead and do is, let's just say we just wanna set it up from a browser. You'll hit Setup Meta Pixel, install code manually, and then you'll copy this code. Then you'll head over to your landing page builder. In this case, I'm using Go High Level and you'll find whatever landing page it is that you wanna use. So say I'm building this one right here. You'll go over and hit settings. And then where it says head tracking code, you wanna drop that in. So obviously I'm in go high level right now, but if you're using any other web builder, or funnel builder, click funnels, um, web flow, whatever it is, you just need to find wherever the head tracking code is or the header of the site is. And that's where you're gonna put that long string of code that we just got from the event manager here. Once you're done copying it in there, you'll hit continue. Make sure that you turn on automatic advanced matching. Hit continue again. And then you can go ahead and set up an event on top of it. There's a few different ways that I like to set up events because sometimes this event setup tool is a little bit weird, but it's pretty simple right here um, and I'll walk you through it. So once you put the code in this site, and we'll go ahead and hit save. What you'll do from there is you'll actually go and grab that URL of the landing page or the website where you put that code in. We'll give this just a sec. And you'll go ahead and drop that in right here. And then you'll hit open website and it'll pull it up in a new tab for you. From here, if everything has been hooked up correctly, you should get a pop-up that shows the event tool. Um, and that shows that you can set up different events. Um, an easy way to make sure that this has been set up correctly is to get the Meta Pixel Helper um, in the Google Chrome Store. I'll make sure I put a link to this in the description, but you just go to the Chrome Web Store, you will add this Meta Pixel Helper um, to your browser and you'll see it pop up here. And then for example, if you go on the page, if it lights up like this, you can see that the pixel is active and it's tracking everything okay. So that's kind of a verify to make sure you actually set up everything correctly. Once again, if you pull this up, the event setup tool, and once again, if you can see this is lighting up, that means you're in good shape. And then you can continue with setting up your events. 
And all that entails is clicking on the button that you want to track as a conversion event or clicking the URL as well. From there, you'll just go to your pixel overview and then you're good to go. So just to show this actually in action because it wasn't popping up in that other browser, when you're setting up with the event setup tool, you'll get this little pop-up here on the page. <clears throat> and then you can choose to track different elements. So for example, on this page, when someone clicks here and then they click this button, that's counting as an opt-in. So you can choose to track this button as an opt-in. I actually don't think that's as good of an idea. You wanna track the next page. So when someone opts in here, or let's say someone purchases a product from you, they're going to go to a thank you page. So instead, it's better to track the URL and make sure you track it so it's the event it contains this URL because sometimes there's different slugs at the end of it. Um, and then you can associate that with whatever event that you would like. So that's how to set up a pixel with the event setup tool through a browser. Um, now I'm going to show you how to set it up with the conversion API inside of Go High Level. Okay, so now let's say we want to set this up through the conversion API inside of Go High Level. So the easiest way to do that is to make sure when you're in your events manager here, you want to have two things ready. You want to have the data set ID or the pixel ID. Just copy that down, paste it, keep it in a safe spot. Then you're going to scroll down a little bit and you'll see the section here that says set up direct integration and a little blue um, link that you can click that says generate access token. You'll click this, it'll load a second, and then you'll get a huge string of numbers and characters and save that as well. Facebook doesn't save it for you. And every time you come back here, it'll allow you to generate a new one, but it'll be different to the first one that you set up. So you wanna make sure that you generate this one, save it in a safe spot, <clears throat> don't lose it, because if you, if you do, you'll just have to redo this whole process all over again. So generate that access token, save this data set ID, then we'll go into go high level and you're gonna to go to the automation section here. Then what you'll do is you'll create a new workflow and you'll start from scratch, name it whatever you wanna name it, and then you wanna add your trigger. So whether someone is opting into a form, purchasing a product, purchasing a service, whatever it is, add that trigger that you wanna track. So I'll just assume that you wanna track a lead. So you'll find the form, you'll choose it and you'll hit save. From there, the action that you need off of this is a Facebook conversion API action right here. You'll choose that. And this is where you'll paste in those things that we just grabbed. So you'll put the access token in here. You'll put the pixel ID here, and then make sure you specify the event that you wanna track. So if you're tracking a lead, it'll be lead. If you're tracking purchase, it'll be purchase, so on and so forth. Um, from there, you're pretty much good to go. Now, if you're tracking a purchase, Make sure you put the value in. So if the product that they're buying is $100, just put in $100 for the value. You don't need to put in the test code. You'll save everything here um, and you'll be good to go. And that's how to set it up with the conversion API. Ideally in a perfect world, I would recommend setting it up with the conversion API through something like Go High Level. Go High Level makes it so easy to link up. There are other softwares, like if you're using a like Typeform, or if you're using some other web builders that are very friendly to the conversion API, you can use it. But I've never found one that is as good at it as Go High Level. Um, and we've actually put all these automations for you in our white labeled version of Go High Level called Convert Cloud. So if you just want access to those things, there's a link below if you want to use it or at least you want to check it out. That's totally up to you. Even if you're just embedding your forms on different web builders. I think paying for Go High Level is totally worth it just for that reason alone, because your tracking is gonna be completely bulletproof. Um, that's pretty much it. Once you install your Pixel and once you start sending ads there, sending people there, give it at least 24 hours before you start to judge if the Pixel is set up correctly. You can obviously go here and start testing events to see if it works, but I find it best when someone goes to your ad, they click and they become a lead, see if everything worked, and give it, once again, up to 24 hours to report back. Because sometimes if a lead opted in right now, it may only show up in the pixel in the ads manager up to 24 hours later. That's not always the case, but sometimes it can happen. So just keep that in mind. Um, I think that's everything. This is kind of a follow-up to another video that I didn't finish previously. So I hope this kind of does that. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, you can comment below, and I have a totally free school community that you can join as well 
probably answer all these questions, so you can join that below too. All the resources I mentioned will be below too, like the Pixel Helper and all that good stuff. I'll see you guys in the next video.